Justin Jefferson's rookie campaign will go down as one of those unforgettable, seemingly impossible seasons that reset the modern standard of dominance among rookies at his position. His 1,400 receiving yards are impressive alone. Then you add the fact that he did it as a rookie, and the fact that he was operating in a run-heavy wide zone offense, and the fact that he was sharing the wealth with another superstar in Adam Thielen. Those factors are key in understanding just how insane his production really was. I mean, 1,400 yards with a 23% target share while catching passes from a quarterback who passed for less than 4,000 yards? That's quite literally unbelievable. Jefferson doesn't have the physical tools that typically launch rookies into stardom. He doesn't run a 4-3, his height is average, he doesn't have the strength to dominate at the line of scrimmage, and yet he outperformed every rookie receiver who's come into the league since Randy Moss in 1998. Jefferson isn't athletic in the way we usually define athleticism, but my analysis would be incomplete if I didn't mention the physical gifts that allow him to separate at an elite level. Here he's running what's typically known as a whip route, where the receiver breaks inside on what's supposed to look like a slant, then does a full 180 back toward the sideline. Now, I want you to pay close attention to Jefferson's lower body at the break of the route. He puts all of his momentum and body weight on that left leg to turn back toward the pylon, and the strength that this takes cannot be overstated. Plays like these are where Jefferson's physical gifts show up on tape. The leg strength he displays going into his breaks is phenomenal, and his explosiveness out of those breaks has NFL defensive backs looking like they don't belong on the field. My favorite quality that Jefferson demonstrates, though, isn't physical tools or even crisp route running. It's intelligence, and the ability to tailor his routes to take advantage of a specific defender or coverage. Take a look at this play from back in Week 3 against Tennessee. Minnesota is running two mirrored branch concepts on either side of the formation, which tell the outside number one receivers to run go routes, and the inside number two receivers to run out routes. The objective of the concept is to put the outside cornerbacks in a bind, by forcing them to take one receiver and leave the other open. Tennessee is in a typical cover 2, which tells the two high safeties to drop into deep halves on opposite sides of the field, while the outside cornerbacks stay shallow to cover the flats. One of the biggest weaknesses in a cover 2 defense, though, is the holes on the sidelines between the outside corners and the deep safeties. So coaches often adjust by having their outside cornerbacks sync with the number 1 receivers vertically if there's no threat in the flat. Jefferson is aligned as the number 2 receiver on the bottom of your screen, running the out route to that side. So for Jefferson to get open, the flat corner Malcolm Butler needs to carry the number one vertically, but for that to happen, Butler needs to believe that there's no threat in the flat. After the snap is taken, Jefferson keys the deep half safety on his side of the formation to establish the fact that the defense is in a cover two, so that he can adjust his route accordingly. Watch how Jefferson hesitates as he's going into his break and almost comes to a complete stop before he breaks outside. Because Jefferson had yet to break when Butler needed to make a decision as to whether or not he needed to carry the number one vertically, Butler thought there was no threat in the flat and made what's called a man turn away from the ball. So when Jefferson finally broke outside, Butler was already turned away, and by the time he turned back around to look inside, Jefferson was already receiving the ball for a first down. Now, you can look to the other side of the play for an example of what would have happened if Jefferson hadn't adjusted his route to attack the coverage. The number two on the top of your screen, Adam Thielen, runs the same route as Jefferson, but doesn't hesitate at his break, which allows the outside cornerback to cover him tightly in the flat and disregard the number one's vertical. The ability to identify a defensive cover and tailor a route to beat that coverage all in the matter of a few seconds proves just how smart Jefferson really is. He's constantly accumulating and processing information when he's out on the field, which lets him manipulate defenders in order to get the best out of the route that the play design calls for. Now, I want to show a couple of plays from Week 13 that speak further to Jefferson's intelligence, this time in demonstrating his ability to pick up on his opponent's tendencies. Here, Jefferson is aligned against Jaguars cornerback Luke Barku, running a simple glance route over the middle, and before Jefferson even got into his route, Barku had already turned his hips toward the sideline, which allowed Jefferson to separate over the middle for an 11-yard gain. The very next play called for Jefferson to run a fade route, and he slightly altered his release based on what he learned from the play before. When Jefferson runs a fade route, or really any vertical route that calls for an outside release, he typically drives off his back foot in order to build up momentum, then takes a skip step to square his shoulders with the opposing defensive back in order to keep that DB guessing as to which way Jefferson is going to release, and finally explodes vertically to separate. Here though, Jefferson didn't bother squaring his shoulders with Barku, because he knew that no matter what he did post-snap, Barku would turn his hips to the outside and stack. 
so Jefferson took advantage of that tendency by first driving off his back foot like he usually does, and then exploding vertically, allowing himself to still win on that outside release even despite Barku's tendency to flip his hips impulsively. It's the little things like these that make Jefferson such an elite separator. He almost never runs one route in the exact same way twice because he's always doing whatever he can to take advantage of a defender's tendency, responsibility, or positioning. The way he runs seemingly simple routes is extremely nuanced, and I'm going to use this play from Week 12 against Carolina as an example. Jefferson is running an 18-yard out route, and there are a few things that he does during the route to ensure separation at his break. At the snap, he angles the stem portion of his route slightly inside to make sure that the cornerback maintains outside leverage with his hips turned toward the middle of the field. Then, just before he breaks, Jefferson takes a slight jab outside, followed by a hard jab inside. When taken back-to-back -back like this, these two jab steps are known as a rocker step, which is one of Jefferson's specialties. And when he uses it, it holds the cornerback with his hips turned to the inside for an extra split side second, just enough time for Jefferson to create separation. You can see him use that rocker step on this play from back in week 3 as well. Here he's running a corner route, and because his defender is aligned with inside leverage, Jefferson takes an outside stem. Then going into his break, he takes a jab step inside to hint at a post route before breaking back outside to the corner. When I analyze a rookie season like I did with Jefferson, I typically look not only for what the player did well, but also for what they can improve on, and because Jefferson has already established himself as one of the league's best receivers, it wasn't easy to find anything that he doesn't already do at a high level. If you want to get really nitpicky, he does occasionally struggle to fight through contact before and during his breaks, and when receivers have trouble fighting through contact, they very often have trouble against press jams at the line of scrimmage as well, but that's not the case for Jefferson because he's so good at making DBs miss their jam. Here's an example from Week 11 against Dallas. Jefferson is aligned in the slot, and the route he's running calls for an inside release. Considering Richard Robinson's positioning right up on the line of scrimmage, Jefferson knows that a jam at the line is likely, so when the snap is taken, Jefferson first squares his shoulders up in an effort to draw out Robinson's hands, then turns and dips his left shoulder to make himself as small as possible so that Robinson's punch lands on Jefferson's back and doesn't impede his downfield momentum. When well-placed contact is made on jams against Jefferson, he sometimes loses the rep, but trying to make contact is so risky because if he beats you at the line like he did here, he will separate vertically every time. So the biggest weakness in his game isn't even that much of a concern because it only showed up on tape a couple of times all season. The historic numbers that Jefferson put up as a rookie probably won't be repeated anytime soon, and it's even less likely that a rookie replicates that performance in a wide zone offense on a target share of less than 25%. Regardless of production, Jefferson's attention to detail is what makes him one of the most if not the most impressive rookie I've ever watched. He already puts out some of the highest quality, most entertaining tape there is, and I can't wait to see what he does in the future. But that's going to do it for this week's video. Next week I'll be covering the Seattle Seahawks offense and why the Let Russ Cook movement ultimately failed despite early success. If you'd like to support the growth of my channel, you can check out my Patreon or Twitter, which will both be linked in the description. But that's all I've got for now, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.